Hi, I'm Adam from EnglishAcon.com and in this video I'm going to discuss the Construct2 debugger. <laughs> debugger. Um, so I'm going to go to Construct2, open up Construct2 and if you have the start page visible simply click on the small cross to close it, go to file and open up any of your projects or open up a new project. I'm actually going to get a file and I'm going to go to open a recent project um, just to demonstrate what the, the debugger is. Now, to when you normally run a layout, you click on this nice run layout button, but you can actually debug layout um, by clicking on that bu the bug icon with the triangle inside, or this bug icon here with the triangle inside. Maybe even if I right click on this, yes, if you right click on the title of your um, program as well, you can also come and you can debug the project. By coming here and right clicking and clicking on run program or debug, sorry, run project or debug project, you actually start from the very first layout as set on the left, so for example first left is loading whereas if you click up here you actually just run the most recent selected layout so just be wary of that. I'm going to debug project um, and this is going to create a debug screen and as soon as this starts I'm just going to click on pause just to stop it these buttons up here can control what's going on in your debugger but I'm clicking on pause just to explain different things okay so this is a, the debugger <laughs> it's really hard to say that word without sounding rude um, this is where your game will play in the screen at the moment you can see my game mountain jump is a vertical game and so it's quite small whereas if it yours is horizontal it will fill the space with a bit more um, you can grab the inspector here to increase or decrease the size of the bottom bracket you can also I think click on here to make the window um, floating and you click on it again and it uh, moves it down here um, I'm just going to click on resume and then pause just to get this information here again you simply click on resume or pause to stop the game in motion now this information tells you how many objects are in the current layout or on screen what the current FPS is what the current percentage of your CPU is used um, what the total memory of images is required and what um, you're using to um, display the game, the renderer. In this case it's WebGL which tends to run better. Uh, you'll notice that I seem to have quite a low FPS and a very high um, CPU usage despite having a very simple loading um, game. The reason for that is because some of the CPU and FPS is associated with the information that's required to um, produce the data below. If I come over here to the profile and then click on run you'll notice that straight away the FPS has increased almost 60 and the CPU has decreased considerably. Again that's because the inspector requires some processing power to produce all these different variables and information. Now if you look down here um, you'll notice on the left and this is within the inspector tab, you'll notice on the left all the objects or plugins associated with your game are included in this scrollable menu. Don't be confused if you see if you look here and you see audio and then below you have the audio button, the back buttons, and there's a small arrow which can expand or close um, these. They're not actually underneath this audio. This audio here is a separate object from these other ones. And this number here just tells you how many instances of this object are currently on screen which is why some of them are dropped down. If I can scroll down to what says logo icons, I can click on that and I can I can actually see how many instances of this are currently on screen. If there are no instances it doesn't display anything. I can then select that instance and as you, you've probably noticed a red flashing um, box has appeared and the information about that instance is now available. It tells you all the information, for example, its name, its unique identification, individual identification, its X and Y, as well as other things, its sprite animation, which, which animation is running, its speed, and so on and so forth. You can also destroy these sprites, um, and you can deselect the highlight as well. Now these names with a small triangle are the objects that you have included in the game. However, there are some automatic, uh, well, there are some main objects which you'll notice, for example, function is an object you include via plugin, and you there are, because it's a pra pragmatic type plugin, there are no other variables other than its unique identification. Likewise, with audio, there's very few 
bits of data which are displayed, just what audio song is playing and the audio engine. However, system, if you click on it, you'll find lots of information and this is where all the other MISC related information and data is kept. So for example, the different layers, so in this case the layer background, its scale, its angle, its viewport left and top, right, etc. And all the sort of information that you may actually need. It also has performance um, related information, such as frame per second, the estimated CPU utilization, and again this is only an estimation because one, this requires CPU, and also um, it's quite hard to get an ac accurate percentage of your game. Um, there's other information such as the renderer, the object count, and the collisions per second, the poly per second, move per second, all this information which you can see in your own games, there's no point in me explaining it. You'll notice that even though I have paused the game, the wall clock timer is continuing, and this is the timer since the game has started, whereas the time here is the time in-game time, I should say, um, which is running, and because I paused it, this has actually stopped. Um, the tick counts uh, tells you how many ticks have actually gone by, and a full tick is when Construct 2 goes from the very first event to the very last event, from top to the bottom, through all of them. It's one tick. Um, you have uh, your global variables, and you can actually change these, so I could actually change this to 10 if I wanted to, as well as these other global variables. <coughs> I can change static variables and I can change the different data associated with the other objects. So for example, this is an object at the top and I could actually, if I wanted to, change this, its Y value to 600 and it would actually move down on the um, next step. Coming over here, we have resume, step, save, load, restart, and then we have these three tabs, inspect, watch and profile. Now because I paused it, I can see the word resume, and if I click on resume, it simply resumes the actual game, but I pause it again. Um, once you've paused it, you can actually click on step, which basically runs through your game one tick at a time. So I could click clicking on step, and you may be able to see in the background my game, uh, the background's actually moving very slightly one step at a time, and that can be good to highlight collisions or certain things within your game which you need to debug to see what's happening. I should probably explain what a bug is, and it's basically something not working as you would expect it, and sometimes you have lot, um, you, can, you can find lots of bugs in your games if you've written it uh, quite ha quite badly, or you may find less bugs, but normally there are some sort of bugs, um, and it's worth getting used to using the, the debugger to find out where they are. Now, you'll notice that these each of these uh, bits of data have a small eye icon next to them, and if I click on them, nothing seems to happen, um, the cursor might flash. What this is doing is basically telling um, the debugger to watch these variables and you can see the variables that you are currently watching by going to the watching tab. So you'll notice that these three variables have appeared here and they're part of the screen transition top which is the unique identification 71. So it's referring to these three variables basically um, and I can stop viewing them simply by clicking on them. And this is good because I can view different variables from different objects to compare what's going on in case something isn't going on as planned. Um, so I'll just resume that for a bit. Um, the other things you have on here are save and load. Um, now because I changed this, it's gone a bit crazy. I'm just going to restart the whole thing. Okay. <coughs> now the other uh, buttons you have are save and load. And what these do, they temporarily save your game state, the whole game state, and then they load it. This is only really temporary, and once you once you refresh um, your game, then um, you won't be able to... Actually, if you haven't closed your browser, you will be able to load the state again. So, for example, if I click on Save, I'm just actually I'm just going to click on Profile just to increase the FPS. So if I click on Save again, and then I click to tap to play the game, then if I click on Load, straight away it goes back to my original saved state. And this is good if you're checking something, you save just before the thing you're checking, you then run the game, you check that, you click on load to go back again, to make, and it enables you to keep on playing a certain part of your game to help you check what's going on. Restart, if you saw what I did, just simply restarts the whole game. I'm sorry if you heard some music before, I clicked on this button, it's quite loud, um, so I apologize about that. Now I've clicked on profile, and the great thing about profile, uh, which ties in with groups as well, is, if I just pause it, I can display every event um, that's running in my game. Pretty Not every event, sorry, every part of my event sheet which is running in the game. 
Currently I'm on a layout called title or three dash title and in this layout I have several different groups um, start of layout flash and next layout. I also have included different event sheets. When I go to my debugger and I go to profile I can actually get a breakdown of the CPU usage um, per group. So for example the group called title start of layout currently has zero CPU usage as does title flash as does title next layout um, and this also includes the event sheets which have been included on title 1 so you'll notice it says 1.6 which is the percentage of CPU usage but none of these groups are actually using anything that's because in title 3 I also have included these event sheets and so this 1.6 is referring to the usage from the other event sheets which are listed below so background and it's got the groups contained within that event sheet and it just breaks it down to so that I know which part of my game is computer intensive and which part of my game I need to change. Um, on top of this the profiler tells you what how much CPU is used how much CPU memory um, power is used to draw the calls which are to draw the images um, as well as how uh, the engine running and the physics simulation. You'll notice at the top also there's a note that says this section only measures CPU time all variables are estimates and draw calls will be an underestimate where the browser uses multi-threaded rendering. Uh, GPU which is gra uh, graphics processing units render times are not shown and the frame rate may be limited by GPU performance. So that is something to consider as well. So that's the basics of the debugger um, and it basically just helps you to improve the performance of your game especially if your game is a mobile game and you need to know which areas are very intensive and which areas are not intensive. There's another thing you can do which is quite useful with your um, with the debugger. I'm just going to minimize this window. I'm then going to go to my event sheet and I'm just going to demonstrate something. Uh, it's called, let's see, it's called breakpoint. Now with conditions and not with events um, you can actually use something called breakpoint. So for example if I click on this group, right click and then go to toggle breakpoint, a small icon has now appeared on the left of my screen. I can re right click on that group again and click on toggle breakpoint to remove it. I can also select conditions solely, click all breakpoint and it the icon appears to the right of those if it's just that condition selected independently I right click on it to remove it I can also right click and add a breakpoint to an action right click again and then click on toggle breakpoint to remove it or I can do it for the whole thing right click click on toggle breakpoint and now I've got the um, toggle breakpoint so what is this toggle breakpoint toggle breakpoint sorry I'm not speeding through if I again click on um, title and I click on debug you'll notice that the debugger works but it's stopped um, if I click on continue it starts continuing similar to the step before so what's actually happened here well the breakpoint um, has actually stopped the current running of the debugger and if I just minimize this and come here to the event sheet that's currently running you'll notice that there's now a, a strange red box around the events that are currently being considered so at the moment every one second uh, I initiate a flash which lasts for one second which is um, some of the text and if I click on continue it keeps on going back to this breakpoint because this is running if I click on next I can actually go through all the different um, events which have been processed so this is processed then the action is processed and then this group is processed and if this group isn't processed goes on to the next thing which is within the functions event sheet because I've included the functions event sheet within this event sheet and I can go through all the different events which are either called or they may not be called like in this case um, and if they are called for example that condition audio equals zero is met so then the then construct two um, sorry then construct two started going through these individual actions 
one at the other and then consider the next condition if it was met it would would have gone through the other actions but it didn't um, so this is another thing that the debugger can do it can go through and tell you which actions are being called uh, and at what point so you can follow it through and you can get an idea of the loop cycle that's within Construct 2 as to how your game runs. It runs from top to bottom. If a condition is met, it then if conditions are met such as this, if th these two are met, it will then go and look at the action and do the action and then go on to the next conditions and then go to the next action. And this is a, a good example of, <laughs> of how that works. I keep on closing that, sorry. So for example, it goes through and eventually it get back to um, it will get back to oops, I can close that so I can click on next to yeah it's got back to the title and all the way back to this um, uh, breakpoint if I click on oh, sorry I keep on clicking off if I click on continue it simply loops through to the breakpoints each time so it keeps it coming back to the break time breakpoint and you can see how quickly Construct 2 loops through this cycle now you can add several breakpoints so for example I could add a breakpoint here I think oh yeah let me just check um, you can't add a breakpoint to the start of layout, so you can't always add a breakpoint. Sorry, that's a bookmark. <laughs> a breakpoint to um, no, you cannot set a breakpoint here because you can't set it to the start of layout action. It has to be to something else. So if I if I add one here instead, um, no, I can't do that because again, it's an event on touch. You can't add a breakpoint to an on touch event. So if I go to functions and this group and simply add breakpoint, there's a breakpoint there. So if I go to continue, it continue takes you through all the events to the next breakpoint. Then I click on continue again, take me all through the events to the next to the previous um, breakpoint. And this is how you can test certain parts of your construct to um, logic, and how you can continue to look at them. And you can even make amendments here as well. Now another thing with the, the debugger, and this is really the last thing. If you notice at the top, um, I'm actually running the preview um, by clicking on the preview or run layout and this takes me to the local host and the um, uh, you have a number behind it as well if I'm running the debugger you have a forward slash and debug but if I get rid of the debug and press enter I then view the game as I would normally I can simply go to this address and type forward slash debug and I can get back to the debugger without having to go back to construct 2 and clicking on these buttons here so that's the debugger that's a general overview I hope that's helped and I hope I haven't rushed through that too fast. If you like this video, please feel free to, just to subscribe. Thank you very much for watching this.